I want to keep track of the amount of tokens that I get, so I'm going to make a new variable to set a new scoring system. Let's go right here to variables and make a new one. I'm going to call it score. Let's hit OK. And now we can see that we have this new variable right here, score. Now, I want to score one point every time the snake gets the token. So I'm going to take the change by block. I'm going to change the setting of this block from length, which was the last variable, to score, which is the new variable. And I'm going to place it right here. So every time the snake touches the token, I'm going to get these four actions. I'm going to hear a sound. The token is going to jump to a random position in the stage. The length of the snake will change. And now I'll score one point. So let's start a new game, see if it's working. I get one point and I can see that the score moves by one every time I get one of the tokens. Now, if I stop the game and I start a new one, I can see that the score is not resetting. I'm getting the same score from the last game. Now it's at five. If I start a new game, I get the score from the last game I played. So I want the score to be reset every time I start a new game. So let's take this block the set length to. Place it right here. Change the setting from length to the new variable, which is score. And we'll place it right here below the set length to zero. So whenever I start a new game, the length of the snake will be zero, but also the score of the game will be zero. Let's start a new game. And we can see that now the score is reset. If I stop the game and then I start a new one, I can see that the score goes to zero every time I start a new game. Now, I can see that the two variables of my game appear right here in the stage, but I don't need them to be always on display. So I'm going to uncheck the length variable so it disappears. And when it comes to score, I don't need to see the name, so I'll just double click it. And now I have only the value of this variable. I'm going to move it and place it right here in the middle of the stage. And I could also hide this variable at the beginning of the game so that I can play with a clear stage. But instead of unchecking the variable right here, I'm going to use the hide variable block. And I'm going to place it right here below the set score to zero. I'm going to change the setting of this block from length to score. And now whenever I start a new game, I can see that I have a clear stage to play in. At this point, and just to keep things a little bit more organized, I could separate this program. I know that these three actions will be executed only once whenever I start a new game, so I could just separate them. And I know that this instruction needs to run throughout the whole game. So I'm going to go just to events and take the when green flag clicked. And now I know that these three actions will be executed only once and all these actions will be executed throughout the whole game. And now if I start a new game, I can see that I have a clear stage to play in. But if the game stops and I want to see my score, I cannot see it. And I cannot see it because I hit the variable. And what I need to do right now is show the variable whenever the game stops. So I'm going to go to this sprite, the snake. And I know that this program stops the game every time the snake touches its own body, the color red of its own body. So I'm going to go to variables and I'm gonna take the show variable block. And I'm gonna change the setting of this block from length to score. And I'll place this block right here before the stop all block. So whenever the snake touches the color red and before the game stops, I will see again the variable. The variable will be shown right here in the, in the stage. So let's start a new game. I score one point. Now two, let's go for a third one. And if the game stops, I can see how many points I just scored. But if I start a new game, I get a clear stage once again. And I can only see my score as soon as the game stops, like right here. 
let's just set a few extra adjustments to the game. And just as the score resets every time we start a new game, I also would like to reset the initial position of the snake whenever we start a new game. I want the snake to start always at the center of the stage. So let's go to motion and let's take the go to block. I'm going to place it right here and I'm going to change the values for X and Y to 0, 0, which is the exact center of the screen or the stage right here. And I'm going to go to events and take the when green flag clicked. So whenever I start a new game, the snake will always start at the center of the stage. Now, another thing that I would like to set at the beginning of the game is the custom of the sprite. In this case, the snake. I always want the game to start or this sprite to start with this custom, with the head custom. Because if I ever change it to body, like here, and I start a new game, I can see that the game stops immediately because the sprite is touching the red color. So let's go to customs, change it back to head. And just to make sure that never happens, I'll just go to looks and I'll take the switch custom too. And I'll make sure that the initial setting for the custom is head. I'm going to select head. And I can see that every time I start a new game, the snake will appear at the center of the stage and the initial custom would always be the head. If I stop the game and I start a new one, I can see that I'm always starting at the center of the stage. Let's go to full screen. I'll start a new game. The snake is at the center of the stage. Every time I catch one of the tokens, I score a point. The stage is completely clear, but whenever the game stops, I can see that the score appears and now I know how many points I just scored. Let's add a new condition to stop the game. Right now the game stops whenever the snake touches its own body. I would also like it to stop whenever it touches the edge of the stage, just like the classic game does. Let's go to the snake sprite. And I know this program makes the game stop whenever the snake touches the color red. So to add a new condition to this statement, I'll go to operators and I'll take the or block. I'll just take the touching color block out of the if then block and I'll replace it with the operator block. Now I'll take back the touching color block and I'll place it in the first space of the or block. Next, let's go to sensing, take the touching block and place it on the second space of the or block. Now let's change the setting of this block from mouse pointer to edge. Now the game will stop whenever the snake touches the edge of the screen. I'll start a new game, collect a few tokens. And if I touch the edge of the stage, I can see that the game stops. One thing that I can see is that if I start a new game after touching the edge of the screen, the snake moves to the center of the screen, but it stays still. And it does so because the game stops immediately. That happens because these two programs are competing with each other. This one sends the snake to the center of the stage, and this one stops the game if the snake is touching the edge of the stage. So, at the beginning of a new game, this program senses that the snake is touching the edge, and it stops the game. There is still enough time for the snake to move to the center of the stage, but not enough time for the game to continue. One thing that we could do to fix this is to merge these two programs. These two actions need to be executed only once at the beginning of the game, so I'll place them outside of the forever loop of this program. Now, if I start a new game and I hit the edge of the screen, I can see that the game stops, and if I start a new one, the game starts without stopping itself anymore. As you can see, merging or splitting programs might depend on the particular circumstances of your project and your personal organizing preferences. However, keeping in mind that sometimes programs end up competing with each other is always a good thing to do. Alright, this is it for now. There are still a few more things I'd like to add to this project, but I feel like it's beginning to shape up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.